This video is going to introduce the idea of shorts or shorting something in a circuit. Now the book introduces this in one context, but there's actually another context in which it's really important. So I'll be talking about both of them in this video. The first is thinking about shorting a battery and the book was connecting this back with the idea of a real battery and using this as a situation where you can't use an ideal battery and you must use a real battery. So the idea is that we have our battery, right? We have our little positive terminal here, our negative terminal here, and we're just connecting it with a wire. Well, if it's an ideal wire, that means that the resistance of the wire is equal to zero. Again, a real wire, that isn't quite the case, but an ideal wire, we say that. But now we have a problem if the battery is also ideal. Why? Well, current is going to equal to our our battery terminal uh, voltage, our terminal potential difference, divided by the resistance of the entire circuit. Now if everything is ideal, we get to say that the terminal voltage is just EMF, but the resistance is zero. right? If we say that there's no resistance in the wire and no resistance in the battery, then the resistance of your circuit is zero and your current is infinite. Well, that's bad. Right? Infinite current doesn't really exist because you don't have infinite charges to be moving. And certainly a battery can't actually output infinite current. So the point about this is that this is a scenario where you actually need to deal with uh, internal resistance. That we can take the scenario and say, well, what is the current in the circuit if it's shorted? We're still going to treat our wire as ideal. But now we're going to have our EMF and note that your internal resistance of the battery is actually what limits it. So there is a maximum amount of current you can get out and that's in the case where you connect the two sides of the battery together. Keeping in mind that if you didn't have this complete circuit, if you didn't have a path from the positive terminal to the negative terminal, no current can flow. So this is actually the maximum current you will ever see is the shorted current. So this is one scenario where you have to think about a real battery. The second scenario where shorting comes up is where you have shorted out components. So in this case, we have things in our circuit and shorting out just basically means drawing a wire. So the book doesn't go through this, but this is actually pretty important because if you're working with a real circuit, your circuit might not work for this reason. So I like to go through it because this has a lot of real world applications and it is an interesting scenario to understand different circuits when you say, well, I'm going to short something out. So let's say, for instance, that I connect these two points by a wire and this is going to be an ideal wire. Now we can then say, well, what happens? Well, initially all of the bulbs were lit. That's not to say that they were lit equally, but they were lit. Now let's ask, now that that wire is there, are they lit or not? So one way to do this is to simply ask, is there current flowing through the bulb? Now we still have a complete circuit. We still have a path from the positive terminal of our battery through some light bulbs back to the negative path. And so I note that if current is flowing at all, then it will flow through light bulb P. So light bulb P is definitely lit. Well, now we come through and we go, okay, well, what about the rest of these? There's a few different ways to analyze this circuit. One of them is to ask about the potential difference across different things. Another thing that I'm going to show you that I think is more helpful is to actually slightly redraw the circuit. Now in redrawing it, we really have to zoom in and think about what's going on here. So note that everywhere here has the same potential. Why? Because that's connected by a wire. So let's call that V1. Now then on the bottom here, everywhere here is also at the same potential. Why? Well, again, that's just a wire. Now, before I shorted it, the only path between V1 and V2 would have been through these bulbs or obviously out and around. But now that I've shorted it, I have an ideal wire between V1 and V2. 
So we can say, and this is where we basically use Ohm's law, that the delta V, which is going to equal V2 minus V1, equals I times R. But this R is of an ideal wire, because we're thinking about this black, uh, sorry, this blue wire. That equals zero. So the potential difference here between V2 and V1 equals zero. So actually, all of this and the wire and this are at the same potential. What does that do to bulbs R and S? There is no longer a potential difference across them. However, they still do have resistance. So if there's no potential difference across them, is current flowing? So one analogy is to imagine a light bulb, right, there's my light bulb, that isn't connected to anything. In this case, delta V equals zero. Well, is the bulb on? No, current equals zero because it's literally not connected to anything. So it's not on. Now in this case, it is connected to something, but there's no potential difference across it, right? And remember, think back to when we first created current, potential difference, and all of that. Potential difference is created by electric field. Electric field is creating the force necessary to push the electrons through the metal. In this case, we have no potential difference, which means we have no electric field. So if we have no electric field, there is nothing to push the electrons through, which means that these bulbs are not lit. So even though they're in our circuit, they are not lit and we call them shorted out. We have added a wire that has basically created a shortcut for our charge carriers to go down. These have resistance, this wire has no resistance. So that's effectively saying, if you wanted to get from one side of the room to the other, and you could either walk on the floor or you could go through an obstacle course. Well, if your goal is to just get to the other side of the room, you're not going to choose to go through the obstacle course. So in this case, the electrons go straight down the wire. They do not pass through either light bulb. Well, what about the other two? This is where it's helpful to draw an equivalent circuit. So if I draw my equivalent circuit, I still have my light bulb P, and I'm gonna label this so this is clear. And then down here, I have my light bulb Q, I'm trying to label that. I have my light bulb T. And then what's happening in here? Well, this is basically just turned into one wire, right? So that looks something like this now. That these light bulbs don't matter. I've replaced it with a wire. So you can imagine replacing all of this with just one wire. So in this case, it's pretty clear now that actually all of these are going to be lit. P, which I already said was lit, and Q, and T. Not necessarily lit the same amount. In fact, P is twice as bright as Q and T, or if you assume that brightness is proportional to current. However, we see that R and S are not on at all. We've shorted them out. It's like they're not even there. So this can be really helpful to understand because sometimes you're going to see circuits where there are some extra wires and some extra components where some of those wires are maybe shorting out components or components don't matter. And if you're ever building a real circuit, you'll see, for instance, some of your light bulbs don't turn on. Well, why? You've shorted them out.